Hi, everybody. We're the Skeleton Crew, except for Dalton, who's not here today. And we are breaking from our normal format right now to show you a preview of one of the very exciting things that you and us are going to get to take part in at this year's Virtual Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting. Um, so before we get into this whole virtual museum space, I just want to briefly remind you that I'm Dr. James Napoli, a postdoctoral researcher at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and North Carolina State University. My name is Amelia Zitlo. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. Say it along with me, kids. My name is Scott Johnston. I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology. I'm Alex Rubenstahl, PhD candidate at Yale University. And I have nothing silly to say this time. It's a serious occasion. <laughs> and Dalton has nothing simple to say in a very serious tone of voice that makes us all laugh, which is very sad. <laughs> Um, Dalton is in the UK right now having a wonderful he's, time. He's been replaced. He's across the pond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Filling in for the role of Dalton Meyer today is today's guest. Um, why don't you take it away? Hi, uh, my name is David Levering. I am the science camps and virtual worlds person at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History uh, in Kansas. And I am running the SVP virtual meeting this year, and it's going to be in the Sternberg Museum's uh, virtual museum here on Gathertown, which is what we're going to do a little little jaunt through today. I'm Great. excited to do Yes, I'm excited to see it. Um, one important note for our viewers is that David is not only, uh, you know, D David not only has the title he just said, <laughs> I didn't think this bit through before I started it. Dave is also a Patreon supporter of us. I think he may have actually been our first patron or our second. One of, one of the first. Yeah. One of the first. And for that, he has our infinite and eternal gratitude. If you also <laughs> want our infinite and eternal gratitude, you know what to do. I yes. said the YouTuber thing. Now, David, please show us the virtual museum <laughs> space. Sign up for I'd the like Patreon. To... Support yes. really goes a long way to keep these kinds of things going. Um, so if you're yes. seeing this and you're not, you should do it. Thank um, you. Yes. So this is the virtual museum lobby. Um, you can see it's kind of, it kind of looks like a retro video game. And that's what the entire thing is going to kind of look like. Um, it was built using some pretty accessible software called Tiled um, and some other bits and pieces where if you really want to know how to do it, just find me on Twitter or social media and I'll give you all the resources that I have. Um, it's very time consuming, fair warning. Um, so we have just a lot of exhibits around this um, lobby area where you first come in. Um, you can open stuff up. We have little cards that uh, Dr. Laura Wilson, our paleontologist at the Sternberg, made with her uh, graduate students uh, a few years back when we had a National Fossil Day event in here. Um, and so you can kind of walk around, you can, you can check out all these little information cards um, about the dinosaurs here in the lobby. There are other little Easter eggs and stuff scattered around. We're not gonna go look at everything, but if you attend the virtual meeting, you will have, um, you'll actually have 30 days approximately to poke around this entire museum. So the virtual meeting, synchronous live events and whatnot will be from the 26th to the 29th. Um, but the museum, for people that are signed up to attend the virtual meeting, will actually be open through, I believe, November 25th. So you'll have, you'll have lots of time to come and explore. Now, right. and, and we should have mentioned, if this video comes out on schedule, um, it'll be a couple of weeks between when you see this video and when the SVP virtual meeting starts this year. So if you haven't registered yet, I believe you'd still be able to at that point, right? Mm -hmm. So if you yes. are interested in going as a result of seeing this video in this wonderful virtual space, um, please consider registering. Um, of course, your registration fees for SVP go directly to support the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, which is our main professional organization. Um, and speaking of benefiting the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, please remember to also attend the live streams we're going to be doing to support the SVP Futures Award grant, um, which is something we've talked about in other videos. We won't belabor the point now, but it's really important to the future of vertebrate paleontology. And so we're hopeful that we'll get as much support as we can. 
Now, I have a question. It says that I'm following, but I appear to be stuck in the lobby. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ruh row. <laughs> hmm. It's following David Levering. And then it's like, do you want to stop following? And I don't. Gotta go pick them up. Let's go gather the children. Yes, now I'm moving by myself. Oh, there he is. Oh, there. You guys abandoned me. <laughs> Alex, did your did you have your parents sign a permission slip to come on this field trip? <laughs> no. Oh, that, so that's the problem. These Ooh, are all. Um, all these exhibits have little info cards. You can go look at stuff. There's going to be a lot more content added in for the virtual meeting. There's a poster hall where we'll have folks research posters um, on display. So you can go look at look at all their stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's also an auditorium, right? Or is that being asked? Yes. So that, okay. There is. It's going to get repurposed for some of the events where I'm not... I'm I'm less concerned about over over capacity issues. <laughs> okay, got it. Look at Alex trundling up here. I'm so sorry. Look at him go. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm stuck. Doom, 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 doom. It's because he's too much of a maverick for this. Who's I factinous? It's the famous fish I... within a fish. Oh my well, god! It is the fish within a fish. People unexplicably call it X fish. <laughs> As in, it was formerly a fish. And now, it's a hemichordate, actually. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. I love Breaking that specimen. It's so cool. It's impressive. Wait, it's not big. My stupid brain was like, I want to look at the that bigger picture of it, and then I walked my guy down to think that would help me look at the bigger picture of it. But that is not how that works. You, you physically, you stepped back in the virtual world, and you're like, it didn't get bigger. Exactly. So this exhibit, like without pressing X and you and having the interactives get triggered, um, was kind of an interesting process to build this as well as the um, little timeline one that's kind of down into our right, where I basically took a photo of the exhibits or a bunch of photos of the exhibits and then put it into a piece of what's normal like pixel art making software. Mm. Um, that I used to make a bunch of the critters that we saw in the lower area and basically just took the photo and compressed it down to 32 oh, well. by 32 pixel squares. Um, yeah. And this is what remained. And it turned out reasonably well. It looks yeah, great. Good. I I was actually going to ask how you like went about generating all of these graphics because I, I was just like, there's no way he painted them pixel by pixel, right? which no. it sounds like, thank God you did not have to do that. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. No, so a lot of this is, um, so the video game building community included, I, I, that's a too broad a statement. Folks that are hobbyists that build things with this like 32 by 32 pixel, 8-bit video games, um, is a very it's a very large hobbyist space. And so... Most of what you see here are just assets where I went and bought um, kits for mm -hmm. certain kinds of things. Um, for I think the most expensive one I've ever gotten is like was like twenty bucks. Um, this one is mostly like the inside of a castle, and I've had people comment that it looks like the inside of the the British Museum or something like that. It's like yeah, probably which is sense. quite famously <laughs> as a small ocean, right? Hmm. The British Museum quite famously has a small ocean in it, like I'm standing in right now. <laughs> Not yet, but probably soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there's any justice in the world, then yes. <laughs> hey, Scott and Alex, come over here and deface the Mosasaurus with me while Amelia's not looking. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Deface the Mosasaurus. <laughs> Is there a button to deface? But there should be, can we can we get a feature edit to deface. spray paint? So you can actually get up on these platforms, but you have to do some work to figure out how to do it. Um, oh my god! I've... Yeah, so there's little trap doors. There are actually access points. So you can get up and walk around. You can climb on top of some of the skeletons. That was one of the things where I did a poll two years ago or something 
um, asking people like, hey, what would you like to be able to do in a museum, but you can't, like you're not allowed to. And one person said, climb on the skeletons. And I was like, I can help you with that. I can do that. <laughs> this All is right, well, if, if that's an option, I would like to yabba dabba do down the back of the skeletons. <laughs> um, well, here, let's let's go to to the yabba dabba do space. <laughs> yes, we'll we'll go to the area where that's possible. This is Thank reminding God. me uh, a while ago. Uh, I, I think I was at an AMP meeting, uh, and when we were all just sitting around having some drinks one night, uh, we decided to all look up the most negative TripAdvisor reviews of all of our respective museums and read them <sighs> out. And it was a blast uh, and I would highly recommend it. And one of them for the Michigan museum was this lady uh, who was very upset that her kids got yelled at for trying to climb on one of our mastodons. <laughs> All right. And it was like, yeah, that sounds I'm like, I'm sorry. A- I interrupt because I need to find a terrible review from the AM and H. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> I know. I remember doing this with you at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, at Michigan, there were only, like, three of them, and, like, two of them were just correct. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> like it was like, it's really hot. And, it was like, it's really hot and humid, and, like, the b- galleries are poorly lit. Th- this is, for, for reference, this was our old space before we renovated and moved buildings. It was, like, it was hot and humid, and the galleries were poorly ventilated, and they just had one big fan that was moving around hot air, and the galleries were kind of hard to read and stuff. And I was just reading through that. I was like, yeah. Damn, they had your yeah. number. You got us. <laughs> I remember my favorite I did review. Oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna go ahead, Amelia. I, say, I, I did this for the Field Museum once, and my favorite one. There was like, or like, because I, I was just looking at. I looked it up on Google Maps, and I saw a one star review, and I'm like, excuse you. And I looked at it, and the woman starts out by saying, "I took my children ages three and one," and I'm like, ah, that's why you had a bad time, because that's a big place, and kids get of tired course, quickly. Three and one can't know anything. Why take them to a museum? <laughs> well, then she's like, there's not a children's area. I'm like, there is. It's in the basement. You didn't look hard enough. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. They don't even know who they are. They have no <laughs> personhood yet. Oh, that's uh, not the I'm, word. I'm sorry. So a review from Alex P. in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> that's look, me. guys, I can't undersell this. This museum sucks. Stagnant disgusting, uncirculated air, exhibits that look like they haven't been updated since 1985, a complete and utter lack of staff or any interest by anyone to do anything but the bare minimum. No child should suffer this museum. No adult (laughs) should suffer this museum. I'm disgusted that a great American president like Teddy Roosevelt is tied to this hideous, outdated, dusty, and busted museum. That's great. That's someone who's got That's some feelings. What about, you? what about the Peabody? You, you know what? It what, what isn't dusty and busted and tied to <laughs> former U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt? This amazing museum that we're in your, right oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> in our Discord, yeah. 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 for Patreon. <laughs> well, the skeleton crew Patreon might be a little tied to Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty not, tied to Teddy Roosevelt. Probably not in ways you need to talk about publicly. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the so the the Sternberg Virtual Museum. <laughs> we need I don't to know that we what, have any Yelp reviews yet. Well, um, I don't know that we've had enough foot traffic. But, we, uh, yeah, that's what we need someday. to court. Yeah. Um, one thing that I just wanted to point out for anybody who's not familiar with the platform, because I'm noticing it a lot, um, we're all muted right now in Gathertown because, like, Otherwise, this would be the worst possible thing to record. Like, the, you, you may know those apps that play your own speech back to you half a second later. It makes it impossible to talk. Um, but if you approach somebody here, you will actually see their video appear and hear their microphone start. Ooh. I'm going to briefly turn on my video wow. in the thing. No, it's I like actually don't think I can while I'm recording. Duty. No, don't do that. You'll break everything. Yeah. Right. No, it's yeah, it doesn't chat. like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Gather I'm not going to do it. Like it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Don't worry. But you can um, see it trying. You can see it trying to activate that feature. Dreams. Right. So it's a cool way to like actually kind of feel like you are with people, you know, and like and interact with them live. Um, yeah. I think it's a really neat idea for a platform. And we're going to have a fair few like, like Harry networking events during this meeting, and a lot of our ability to do those networking events, be it roundtables or just socials for people like. Behind the behind the scenes look, as far as things we're planning that aren't public yet, um, there's going to be like networking sessions for 
research areas. There's going to be networking sessions for people in particular career fields. Um, we're, we're planning quite a few of them, and they really do hinge on the ability to basically walk up to somebody and say hi. It's a really nice feature that this has that, like, group I Zoom calls just, just do not have. Like, not yeah. that there's anything wrong yeah. with group Zoom calls. I had a lot of fun at one of the virtual SVPs kind of circ circulating between rooms. But, you know, this it's so much more organic. I really like it. Scott, how did you do that? I'm built different. Oh, oh, he's up on the... <laughs> oh. Scott, how did you different. do that? <laughs> Did you find what? Did you find a bug? Yeah, There's he, probably no, a little he's, gap. He's up there. on the pliosaur exhibit. Yeah, I know. Oh um, no, it's not a bug. You just I, yeah. It, you you found here. my sh you found a shortcut that I built to the basement. Ah. There you go. Oh wait, where the hell am I? Ah. I get it. I'm so good at this. Oh my god, I'm in. <laughs> right, we'll I think you have to, to the... follow us. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go to the basement. We'll just go to the basement now. I'll have to fix this before people actually get into the yes. virtual meeting. <laughs> there's Got things it. like that in here where it's basically my my way of shortcutting things. I'm sure there's other ones that I need to go and fix. <laughs> I love this. I oh my god, I found I found the bumble. The what? The bumble. Okay, so I you're telling me I can ghost walk through like a human being, but I can't ghost walk through some boxes. <laughs> I don't make the rules here, man. <laughs> yeah, like there's this whole uh, cryptids based world that I built for a camp. Oh my god. I found oh, a mystery. Is that what we found? To the yeah, it's like a murder mystery world where there's a bunch of yetis that like attacked a ski town or something. <laughs> I love that. I think we, we should probably transition to being a cryptozoology channel because... Oh, no, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Your, uh, your viewership, one way or another, will go through the roof. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some, something will happen to our viewership. Yeah. Presumably. Something will happen to it. Oh. No, the cryptozoology... We, we, could, we could do numbers. All right, this is where I want to stay. Oh. Oh, where'd the skeleton go? Well, oh, that's no. annoying little bug. Extremely lost. <laughs> well, I, uh, so I see the T Rex, and I, I'm going to remain with the T Rex for a moment. Yeah, oh, exactly. you should do that. There's a Did just take a second to load. There, yeah. there it is. Yeah, so that's you can go weird. up. You should be able to go up one of these poles. Unless past me changed something. Ooh, Did we lose you? Alex? Past me may have changed something. I'm, I'm here. I'm in the shark world. Shark world. <laughs> shark world. <laughs> I don't know how to get down. I'm stuck up on shark world. <laughs> this is where I didn't say, down from this platform? I didn't say it made sense. I just said you could do it. <laughs> this is great. I had to live there forever. Oh, I should show you all the, like, uh, pitfall cave trap that's elsewhere in the museum. What? Yes, yes. you should. Every, every good museum needs to have a pitfall <laughs> trap. So I'll, I'll set it up before we go eventually find it. But I was talking to another paleontologist just about, like, work that they do. And they happen to work in, in cave systems. I think it's place to see in caves or something like that. Um, and so I was like... That's what we need. Like we need a, a trap where paleontologists fall into it and they can't get out. And there's literally a there's technically one way to get out of the pitfall. Well, there's two ways. You can respawn, which is just a button you push in the menu system here. Um, and then there's another way that no one seems to ever find on purpose because it's weird and gross. Oh my! Well, we have to do something weird. And we gross. need to find it. Yeah. All right, so we'll 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 make our way over there. Let's see. Make There's some other down levels, down. some other levels of the basement to navigate through first. Oh, I'm going to um, live forever on the shark platform. <laughs> <laughs> you should that. be you should be able to just go back through the little trap door. Is it yeah, that working? Like, oh my god! <laughs> Lost forever <laughs> neath the streets of the trap city. Oh, I think <laughs> success. Shark city. I, I think I see M. Bison up top. 
So you can look in some of these cabinets. There's, there's fossils from the Sternberg inside of Another these old cabinets. Tables? Oh, yeah. We're we're I think just down south of where you were. I just oh, saw goodness, you. Oh goodness, yes, there are. I'm climbing a ladder. That's neat. What you have in there? Oh. Shark like, how teeth. did I get here? This shark teeth. Ooh ha ha. Okay, is I faxing this? Now I'm back in the great mm. great hall. I did it. I think I've I, I think I found the pitfall trap. You did? Or well, wait. there's a hole in the ground. David, is this hole the pitfall trap? Uh I literally have no idea. There's there's lots of holes throughout this. Enter portal. <laughs> no, that oh, oh, I think that's one of the field work ones. Oh, oh yeah, that no, that's not sense. it. That's okay. definitely oh, not oh, it. Yeah, that'll take this you is to the a whole crew. different place. This Ooh. is the crew. This, this museum is like my uh, my research project. Holes. Yeah, well, there there is a portal to the Karoo biostratigraphy field camp world that I built with some of my staff for a camp cool. in 2021. Um, 21? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a stratigraphically accurate recreation of the northwest quadrant of the Permian Karoo. That's wow. so cool. That's really, really cool. That's pretty this neat. This is like, I mean, I know we keep saying this, but this is just such an awesome space. Like the whole this way it's designed. This is incredibly impressive. I think this is going to yeah. make virtual SVP a real gem. That that yeah, Karoo you know. one I built with uh, Dr. Devra Hawk and our TA, Brianna Gomez, in two weeks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was, Goodness. It was, uh, it was a two weeks to be remembered or forgotten, depending on <laughs> how you want to look at it. Um, but we got it done and it's pretty dope. Dever and I are going to try to write it up for a paper at some point, but she just started a new job. That's fantastic stuff. Yeah. We can go poke around there later if we have time. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, if folks come to the virtual meeting, there's a couple access points in the virtual meeting. One of them was just located down here in the basement. There should be, an, there might be another one still in the lobby, but I'm gonna have to do some renovating of this whole place before the virtual meeting. And that might end up getting taken out just cause I don't want it to be too easy to find or else it'll cause problems. Mm -hmm. I went out the yeah, bookshelf so and now I can't come back. There's the Karoo and then there's a neotropical rainforest with poison dart frogs that are like ecologically um, accurate as far as their distribution. And like you'll find them, in, you'll find them where you would expect to find them if you went out in the field and looked for them. And I believe we managed to get like a genetic um, variation across a river system. So if you go on one side of the river, wow. frogs God, all that's look a rad. little different each other. This is yeah. So the students, the students collected the frogs, and each frog had like an alphanumerical code on the photo, and so then they would turn the code in that they found to the instructor and the instructor would give them a row of analysis data that they got from sending samples back and they basically ran stats on the chemical composition of dermal toxins and these poison dart frogs in different parts of the forest and they were able to see variations in chemical composition between different regions that were split up by a river that's awesome i also love the sloth that talks to you yeah he makes me very happy um, I just phased into a room with a piano and cards on tables, and I don't know how. Surprise. Uh, you're the magic, <laughs> you're, you're, you're gambit. As I said, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff in here that I installed to, I don't know, amuse myself as much as anything else. <laughs> uh, hello, Amelia. <laughs> hello, you found it. How I did. did. What was that? How did we get here? Do you want to play <laughs> poker? I don't know how to play poker. Ooh, I can really? Try. What is it? Well, I know I need I need a cheat sheet constantly. I just I discovered the the music video for Thriller. Yeah, I was gonna say that that the skull on that bookshelf used to play Thriller. I guess that I guess the link's still good. It, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, this I, I this Megatherium Tetris. There's amazing. battle Tetris here. This Megatherium here is reminding me that when when we were going oh. through and moving Michigan's collections, we saw a. We discovered a project that must have been undertaken by some poor grad student that pissed somebody off, and it was a like box full of giant ground sloth osteoderms, like the tiny mm. little pea, pea looking things. Every right. single one of them was individually labeled. Oh, and it was my like, God. 
That's so terrible. for those that of you that are also in here, this is this is the poster room, and there will be way more posters in here when the actual meeting happens. This is all left over from last year, so I didn't forget how to make my my own setup um, when this meeting rolled around. But it's a it's I can try to show you all how this works. So you've got the different poster numbers. We may figure out a more elegant way of doing this, like just having the number instead of saying poster on all of them. Um, but you step into this little gray space in front of the poster, and then you click X, and you can see the poster in question. And also, everybody else that's standing in that little gray space um, can talk to each other. Let's see here. Indeed. Oh, hey, it's Danielle's work. I worked with her in the uh, Hell Creek back in 2014. <sighs> And oh it's God. really nice because normally if folks are walking around, if somebody walks past you, they'd just be jumping into conversations. So these little grayed out areas where it's basically like a private shared space. And then if somebody wants to stand next to their poster and present it, they can have a conversation that just feels a little bit more like an actual meeting with folks that are coming up to, to talk with them. Hmm. At some point, I'm going to stop playing Tetris. I think I'm going to stop right now. <laughs> I've been playing Tetris the whole time. I, I have. Yeah, let me, let me find you guys. down by the posters. Uh, do you, do you know gonna... how to do the find option? Yes, I do. Didn't there, okay, didn't a movie come out about Tetris? Yeah, apparently it was awesome. I don't know. Everyone keeps saying that. They keep making these movies about, like, products, and they can't all be good. <laughs> yeah, like I heard the Blackberry movie, movie was great. Good. And it was so lame. We should probably cut this. I don't want to upset Cheetos. Wait, which, which movie? The flame, the, the Flaming Hot Cheetos movie. Wait. Like, there wait, was a Flaming, flaming Hot, Cheetos, flaming Hot movie? Cheetos sponsorship? We, <laughs> we're on YouTube. People are wiping like Cheetos dust off onto their clothes right now watching our videos. That's <laughs> not... Okay, so <laughs> I had no idea there was a Flame and Hot Cheetos movie. It's on Hulu. It's, That's the only reason I know about it. Because it, Lord it's like have mercy. It's inoffensive, I guess. But just like everyone was like, this is, you know, what a fun movie. And I'm like, I heard is. the Black Mary movie was rad. It has the guy I, from Kingsman in it. I did hear that apparently What's His Face does a fantastic. Uh, Glenn Howerton really chews up the scenery in that one. <laughs> As opposed to normal. When he's well, yeah, he doesn't really do, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> you got All me right, there. Let's go find that pitfall trap. <laughs> let's go yes. find the pitfall trap. <laughs> Assuming David can remember what part of the building it's in. I mean, worst case scenario, uh, we can also track. find the go kart track. Wait, just go kart. Yeah, that's what? the thing. the The leaderboard isn't turned on because we there's server space that we basically have to pay for in order to turn that on. Um, but the race cars still work. You're just not going to know what rank you're at or something for everyone else that's used it. Well, I think I know oh, how I... we're going to end the video, but. <laughs> um... Oh, this is not what I wanted. So this is one of the lot. This is one of the um, auditoriums that we have built in. Right now it plays videos from the Sternberg's YouTube channel. Um, let's see here. Which, if you oh. like paleontology, go consider subscribing to the Sternberg's YouTube channel page. Please do. Yeah. Um, I say if you like paleontology, as if there are people who don't like paleontology in the audience Ooh, right now. Technically, yeah. there's some biology in there, too. Oh, so there's also like a secret meeting room back here. You can come back and look like you're doing something really nefarious. <laughs> I can't wait. Nefarious. How on earth did you get in there? I can't even locate you. Bum, bum, bum. I could get you, Jimbo. Secret. I oh I'm lost. Oh there's you oh in there. Okay. Oh got Hello? it. Okay. In here. And then all the way in the back. What was that line from I think it was Indiana Jones where he's like, Are you kidding? He got lost in his own museum. I get lost yes. in my own museum constantly. <laughs> <laughs> where did I put where did I put that? I love this. This is this is the official virtual skeleton crew hangout <laughs> spot yeah this is where we're going to describe discuss unpublished research in hush tones <laughs> i mean you could Oops. also use the pitfall trap we're about to jump into for that let's go True. <laughs> okay 
So, ba 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 it's very innocuous, which is part of the charm of the whole thing. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is just me being very over the top with, like, it's the geology lounge, so I'll just fill it with crystals and stuff. Okay. Geology. Oh! oh. <laughs> so, I'll give you all a moment to find all the, all the jokes in here, because there are a lot of them. Oh, goodness. <laughs> There's a lot of bones. A lot of things have come in here and not come out. Revise and revise it. I like that a lot. Classic. So oh. when I was when I was building this, this this paleontologist I was speaking to about pitfall traps, who I, I will keep nameless for the time being, um, said, "This is great. We don't have couches in in our caves, but this is great." And she said, but you know what you're missing? You're missing the poop bucket. Who's the what? You're missing the poop bucket, like the bucket that they use to go to the bathroom. And I was like, of course. Noted. So if you want to escape the pitfall uh, trap, you have to Super Mario pipe your way through the bucket. <laughs> James, oh, and, like, James and I discovered that. We accidentally My initial guess was pretty close, though. <laughs> And if I had better programming skills, it would make a Mario pipe sound when you jump down it. But I'm ah. not that good at those things. What is that? Like, doo -doo. boop, boop, boop. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. James and I accidentally yeah, escaped. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we first went to the poop bucket. <laughs> Just straight to it. Just straight line. to the poop bucket. Hey, when nature calls. A P line, if you will. I'm going to scream. Character. Jurassic yeah. Park, when you gotta it go, you gotta go. Character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Hey, James, have you called that doctor yet? I yeah. have no intention of calling any doctor about it. You're gonna, you're gonna die from stomach cancer. Call a doctor. Not, I don't have IBS, Alex. I have never been diagnosed with IBS. I therefore do not have it. <laughs> There's going to be a conspicuous cut in the video, and now we're in this room with tables. <laughs> oh, I was already in the table. Yeah, so we've, we use this for some of the, like, a, a couple of virtual events that I had in here during SVP last year, um, or af after the in-person meeting. Um, and it's, it's very handy for doing things like round tables and, and stuff like that. So again, like you can move between spaces and you basically screen share with everybody that's sitting at, or standing at the same table. Um, makes doing those kinds of little conversational things um, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Man, these little skeletons are so cool. Alex, what room are you in? I'm in the big wet room, and I'm afraid to leave the, <laughs> the big wet room because I got very lost when I went to the basement. <laughs> It'll do that to you. Yeah, so the, the, the display items in there, there's some of them that are kind of gray and, and white, and those were made by students of uh, Dr. Megan Weatherill um, at University of Arizona. It's a longtime friend of mine and her she works in a, among other things. Her department is, I think, data science or something to that effect. But they have a video game program there, and so she had some of her students kind of do some commission work. Um, so they, they did some of them, and I, I did the rest of them that are a bit larger. Hmm. And yeah, there's great software for doing that stuff. It's a lot easier with the tablet. <laughs> How are you um, moving so fast? What was that? How are you moving so quickly? I, I don't know. I'm not like sprinting or anything. I'm just regular walking. He's got places oh. to be, Alex. <laughs> Rolling around at the speed of sound. One of my oh. favorite things I ever like. We've run like summer camp things in these spaces and and other things that we haven't seen yet in this little tour. Um, and one of my favorite things I've ever seen the kids doing is playing tag because <laughs> oh. you all walk at the same speed. And so they're like ch they're chasing each other, and it basically comes down to, I guess, what angles, like where you're turning. But if you're all walking the exact same speed, I feel like tag becomes 
and you can basically only move like a rook in chess, um, tag becomes a, a different kind of game. It's like snake. <laughs> I found the blue-footed booby display. Oh, I found a little frog. I was going to say, I, I, I found the frog as well earlier. There's also a brain on a jar here. Oh. Are there... I, wonder, I wonder if that's okay. copes. <laughs> Are there any other animals from the Sternberg Museum in tanks? In the virtual um, museum? I don't think I ever added the rest of them. Um, at ah. a certain point, it, it got to be a bit daunting to try to yeah. install like the tortoises or the tank with the monitors or all that stuff. Yeah, you guys and have we, a lot of critters. Yeah, and we also obviously need to leave some incentives for people to come visit us in person. In per- um, yeah. Absolutely. I've I've had the idea before of doing like a, a, just a live stream from the monitor tank and embedding it in here, but there's not really enough foot traffic coming through here to really make that a worthwhile thing. I mean, they so, are lizards. You could just have a static image. It would be roughly. <laughs> you could say it's a live stream. Yeah. No, no, no. This is a video. The lizard. Yeah. Right. Um, now, I think that what you've said is absolutely true, that we got to give everybody incentive to register for virtual SVP and come to the Sternberg Virtual Museum. Um, I think it's a really great thing that you can do posters like this. It's much more natural than any of the other alternatives I've seen. Yeah. Um, some of the you know more involved talks and everything are going to be hosted here. Um, but I think if we want to incentivize everybody like a lot, you should probably show us the go karts. Yes. Yes. I think I, I want to go to the cards. Alex, also, uh, I hope the go karts do not all move at the same speed. Do, do, oh no, they all move at the same speed, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. How do you win? It's just, it's completely about how good you are at turning. Just like real racing. Oh, here we are. How do I get on one? X. Press X. Press X. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep. You guys started like way ahead of me. This is completely unfair. <laughs> I went the wrong way. Uh, See, now oh, this is really giving us me? an opportunity to do something that you never get to do in museums: ride go karts <laughs> oh. really around a, a connected field area. I mean, I want to ride a go kart through a museum. Can you? Ima- can you guys imagine doing? Okay, now I'm actually like. Can you no. imagine like a, a Mario Kart style like go kart track that's around the fourth floor of the AM and H? That would be incredible. James Let's go. I, hey, we if we you have can a send thought. me send me a bl- some kind of blueprint or a picture, oh. and I could probably build it for you. Amelia, <laughs> wait, photogrammetrize it. We'll mod some video game to put it in. <laughs> just just meta scan the entire fourth floor. Wait, are these where, duck boats? Yeah. Why are there ducks? Why can't I? I don't know where go karts all vanished. <laughs> oh, I found her. one. Abandoned. How do, I, how do I access the duck? The duck. The duck is highlighted. Wouldn't you like to know? The duck <laughs> is in your mind, Jimbo. So, you know Alex, you can't move. I can't. No, leave the no, hot. Alex, you got to work your way to the bottom of. The, I was. I was stuck in the same area. There's a cart that had okay. been. That's like abandoned at the bottom of that map, and then you just like proceed. I don't know, this all sounds a little too complicated for a simple man like me. Scott and I are in a foot race now. <laughs> oh, I'm... There's one more go-kart in my island here. And there's there's ducks as well. I've yet to see any ducks. You go for it, Scott. There it is. Ah! Aha! Uh-huh. Beep, beep, beep. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm on your tail, levering. <laughs> this is brilliant. Like a- I'm loving this, this so sick. much. I feel like a child playing Super Mario Brothers again. This is great. Or this wouldn't be Mario, right? Yeah. Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Mario Kart, right. But, you know, 8 bit games in general. Finish! Yay. Oh, God. Back in, I'm in, in another cave, apparently. Do, 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 do. 
This is wonderful. I am. I don't want to have to record another video tonight. I want to play this. <laughs> yeah. That's sweet of you. So it's the it's the same cave. It's just a different part of it. Like if you were to I zoom see. super far out, it would be the same one we were in earlier. Okay. Not that that matters terribly, I suppose. There are carts like scattered everywhere. <laughs> Those are from the remains of previous racers who couldn't make it. <laughs> this is the death race. I mean, if I could install like little traps and things in here that weren't super obnoxious and just, I don't know, would send you back to the beginning, which no one would want, to, no one would find yeah. that amusing. I um, definitely I'm would. Happy to report you can drive the go karts in the museum. You can. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you oh my can. God. <laughs> now, I think it would be pretty cool because we're official SVP, you know, member, uh, you know, we're important members of SVP now, uh, hosting events. Could you code it so that any go karts we get in are like just like two percent faster than everyone else's? <laughs> <sighs> no, unfortunately, I I cannot do that. What I have been considering doing is is getting in touch with the company that we were working with for server code things last time because they made the go karts look like the jeeps in Jurassic <gasps> Park. Yes. Um, so these are just Gather Town standard go karts right now. Um, if you know how to do things like script over using an external server, um, you can make it look like you're riding around on a jeep, a tank, a dinosaur. There's all you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. That's um, very cool. The, the magic of taking computer science classes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it. So I just need to get in touch with them and. Know, figure out how much they would want to charge us for all that. Well, I think I think we should probably start wrapping things up, but this has been such a wonderful, wonderful tour through this virtual exhibit space. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I, let's, if you yeah. have time, let's wrap up over in the Karoo, because I can show you like yes. a very small chunk of it at least. Let me uh, locate you so that I can find Can you like, drag us through space and time? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Every Fantastic. every time anyone refers to the Karoo, I think of the like friggin' um, Nixon and Futurama Ka screaming it. Oh, the Karoo didn't let me keep my go kart. I no, know. it doesn't. It doesn't. So you're gonna have to go. It's a completely different area, and so you're gonna have to like make your little character and do all that fancy stuff. How do I not be in the fireplace? I want to not be. <laughs> no. Uh, so, Alex, if you see on the right side there. Um, now I'm in a cave. Are you I don't still think I'll, go, I'll go get Alex. I'll go get Alex. So, Alex, if you see. A search. So, so, Alex, if you see on the right side there where it has like people, where it has you and me, if you yeah. click on me and then go like locate on map then it'll draw a line to me and you could just follow that and get back to me i'm just gonna say follow following scott okay scott Go yeah please. so Let's it's it's obviously the no fossils in found. here the fossils in here are not the entire extent of what you would find if you actually went there um but everything that you find is in biostratigraphic order and the lithology that you will find in each layer is accurate to what you would find at the actual Ooh. place. This is so cool. It's so we neat. ran, we basically ran a field camp in here for a bunch of high schoolers that summer. Um, and they, I don't have any of it with me. No, I'll show it off somewhere else sometime. Um, they, most of them had like zero actual academic geology experience. Like they took earth science classes in high school and all that. And they mapped this entire place. Um, wow. Let's put a little project. And strat columns for each region. That's so cool. This is wonderful. I found a lot so, of invertebrates and some copper lights. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's what's most common in the lower units is um, you're going from a lot more aquatic to a lot more terrestrial as you get up section. Um, like you could, you could literally, if you were running like some kind of paleo sedimentology sedge class, like you could come in here and run 
a multi-week activity. That's very so, easily. This is so cool. Yeah. If it were really accurate, you'd be able to find uh, my vomit. <laughs> I'll work on that. Shouldn't be too hard. From when I was, I had to move a specimen. Uh, so that would be in the upper units, I'm guessing, because that's where the big vertebrates are. Yeah, yeah, it would be in the up. Yeah, we were moving uh, okay. masses, masses spondylus. Okay. Alex, follow me. You found me? Yeah. All right, I'm following. Did, did you find his vomit, though? You have a go-kart. I don't have a go-kart. We can, we can get you a go-kart. I'm going slow. This is too complicated. Yeah, my uh, I will say my mat building skills were a little bit less when I made this than they are now, and there's some weird Scott, just leave me. walls. I can't get through here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it plays pretty well though. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, it there's looks, a few it, areas it, where like it, I feel like I should be able to walk through here, and you can't. It's supremely charming, like to just like it, I like looking at it. So. Every once in a while, you'll come up across this thing that says X to interact. And you press X, and so it'll say, oh, you're an outcrop. You're seeing embedded in medstone, claystone, stratified conglomerate deposits visible. And these tags are just all over the place in here. And so what the students had to do is walk around through here and find these tags and find the fossils and use that, that to basically do their mapping. Mm -hmm. um, with a lot more time and in a non-zero budget, it would be like, getting images that you could embed in the higher levels and then you start with text and then you get photos and having to like ID rocks as they're going. Right. I found a lot of paleoniscus as well. Now, could you hypothetically have done this in a way to make it ugly and devoid of spirit with AI? <laughs> yes. Ah. Though when I built this, all of that generative stuff didn't, ex didn't exist publicly yet. Good. <laughs> a better time. Let's see here. I like that somebody has finally tried to write a scientific paper with AI, and everybody's like, we, we know immediately what you're doing. There is no way to make this look good or Wait, realistic. Wait, that happened? Yeah. Who tried? Yeah, somebody, I think, in the behavioral sciences, maybe. It was either that uh, or pure math. It was one end of the hardness scale or the other. I don't remember which. Oh, jeez. Truly incredible. What a time to be alive. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it so? I will resist. Really, really in any way I can. So anyway, this th <laughs> space is extremely large. Um, yes. Yeah. <sighs> Probably about four times the size of the virtual museum. Wow. Right, it just keeps take. going. I mean, it's so large that I have I have given up on finding my way out. Yeah, so that's, that's again, one of the challenges when we were trying to think of, like, how can we make this feel like an accurate field experience for these kids who are trapped in, like, COVID lockdowns? Is if they're not paying attention to actually mapping they will get critically lost very very fast just like real field work just like, just real like field work. I got lost in the crew i'm glad that For we could give you this experience though through a computer this time in the african savannah for for almost two hours by myself that sounds um it was an important experience in my life <laughs> i think Mostly, I remember being afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like picking stuff. Like, oh, look at the uh, make the best of it. This is interesting. Get that fun primal back of your head fear. <laughs> like it's it's the little Australopithecus in you, just like screaming. What was oh, that sound? I, a, a gazelle like ran out of the bushes, oh, like five maybe five hundred feet in front of me, very far. And I was like, I'm going to. I I, peed, I was basically like, this is it. <laughs> It's Did you pee die. yourself, Alex? Do it. Did you pee yourself? Do I need to add that too to make it accurate? Oh uh, yeah, just, just add some of my urine as well. 
<laughs> what, what we're um, getting is is that this is an incredibly accurate reconstruction of the Karoo with not nearly as much of Alex's bodily fluids as needs to be. It made me feel fear. You know it's real. Well, I finally found so, the fossil vertebrate, so because I've achieved my goal, I'm declaring that the tour of the virtual museum is over. <laughs> um, I, I got Didn't mine. Give you traumatic flashbacks, Alex. <laughs> yeah, we also need to let Alex recover before we record the video. Yeah. Um, but anyway, David, thank you so much for showing us this platform yeah. that you built. Um, I, I think that the virtual meeting for SVP this year is going to be really, really special. And so I yeah. want to make one final plea, or not plea, but recommendation to our audience. Bang. If you like paleontology, and especially if you're thinking about trying to pursue paleontology professionally, and you can, it would be a good idea for you to register for the virtual meeting and start to attend these academic conferences, see how professionals interact with each other, see how professionals discuss their research, how people present research, and what's going on um, in you know cutting edge vertebrate paleontology. There is no better way to do that than going to a conference. And I'll say to add, add to that, like, <laughs> I, I've interacted with students who have this concern that like they don't have anything to contribute and well, why am I, why am I going like I'm not doing any work and et cetera, et cetera. And for anyone watching this that is maybe having a similar thought, um, that's fine. I like, I started going to SVP, I think when I was a sophomore in, in undergrad and didn't present anything for two years. I basically just went, I, just went and observed so most of it. I didn't really know a lot of people there, um, though I knew more people after I went one and then two times than I did before that. Still a very valuable experience to just see how things work. Um, so don't maybe, psych yourself out of trying, trying to do it. Yeah. Put faces to names, too. And just chat yeah. to folk. Yeah. And, and don't be self-conscious about not being there to present anything yet, right? My, uh, I also went before I presented anything. I went to SVP in Berlin when I was a sophomore in college, right? And I didn't have anything to present. And there was a part of me that felt very silly every time somebody whose name I recognized from papers or the literature or what I'd read or people who had written books I had as a kid asked me what I was doing. But, you know, they all know you're there to learn. If you're an undergrad or a high school student who's not presenting, they know why you're there. Um, so it, it's just, it's a good way to get your name out there and, and start to talk to people, especially, no, uh, you know, I mean, of course the one recommendation I would have is like, do, do be professional while you're there. Um, yes, yes. You, you know, um, everybody has heard stories of somebody who d did an oopsie at their first SVP. Um, <laughs> Just their first? Or their fourth. Or, right. Or, <laughs> or, or enough their twentieth. Or enough of them that their advisor had to give them a telling off about it. That's not me, to be clear. <laughs> That's not you. No. Um, You're gonna have no. to tell us that story afterwards. Uh, uh, it's not my story. <laughs> about someone else. <laughs> about somebody else, right. No, no, I, no, I, yeah. I like once we're not recording. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um but yeah, it, it is just like <laughs> You know, you want to make sure you're being professional, but beyond that, if you're there to learn, you're there to talk, you're there to discuss, you know, I think that you, uh, I think that it's something that's very worthwhile. And I think for any of you who are a little worried about what professional conduct would necessarily entail, because in academia, it can be a little tricky. There's ways in which academics are very, very informal, and there are ways that they are more formal, and they're not the same ways that, like, I don't know. I always get disoriented in like medical context because there's a very different system of expected hierarchy with how you behave around people. Like mm -hmm. at one point when I was taking medical anatomy during um, during like the time when one of the TAs was over at the table helping us with something, I swore. Um, you may know from the number of Quetzalcoatlus songs in our videos, we swear a lot as academics, and I didn't think anything no. of it because you know I was just like, oh, you know, it, I was being very casual about it in the way that academics often are, but my table was mortified that I had sworn in front of their TAs because, you know, that was considered very unprofessional. What did um, you but say? on the flip side, I, I mean, I just like, I, I said like, ah, oh, what the fuck is this or something like that? You know, like mm. it wasn't, it wasn't something bad. Like, it's not like I was, 
you know, it's not like it was a cancelable offense. It was just I said a bad word, you know. Um, but anyway, this is a long-winded way of saying if you're curious about <laughs> if you're curious about what uh, professional conduct entails at an academic conference, you can reach out to us. You can talk to us. You can comment on this video. If you're in our Discord, you can talk to us there. And we can give you some tips and tricks to, you know, help you make sure that your first conference is a successful one. And SVP just straight up has a code of conduct that you can look at as kind of a, like, general guidelines. Yes. Yes. I, I think that that is a very good place to start. Is Absolutely, with, it is. With the SVP code of conduct, which it seems like some people in our field have not started with. <laughs> or heard of. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. But anyway, I yeah. think I think that kind of covers everything. Um, David, anything last you want to say before we wrap up the video? Um, I think just to just to reinforce some of the stuff that, that James has been saying. Like, I'm, my, in my job, I work a lot with high school students, and then I work a lot with undergrads who used to be my high school students, and. I cannot express emphatically enough how important um, it's the, the Hamilton lyric of being in the room where it happens. I cannot express emphatically enough how important it is to be present. This is the thing that I hammer home with my students over and over and over again is like I, I would trade half a GPA point, frankly, for a rocking professional network by the time you get out of undergrad or grad school or whatever the case may be. It's, it's so important. Um, and one of the best ways to start developing it, um, frankly, the discord you all have is probably going to start turning into a networking thing <laughs> for prof for future and current professionals eventually. Um, but also going to conferences like this where that's where, that's where the people are. And if you're in the room, you're going to meet them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And if you're looking, you know, to join a network of people who I will tell why the movies you like are not very good. Yeah. That's, right. that's most of the Discord but, experience. But once in a while, they'll send you job ads when you're about to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. how I got the position that I'm in now is people that I know in the field being like, hey, apply to this. And I was like, that, that's how I got both I of will. the ones that I'm in. Was I remember when Harvard first um, posted this petition? I think I had like five or eight people like the day it was posted, just like DM me on Twitter. There was just Do like it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but speaking of our Discord server, um, indeed, disc the Skeleton Crew Discord server is um, you know is something that is accessible to patrons of the Skeleton Crew. So if you support us on Patreon, you'll have access to that. And as is tradition for the end of all of our videos, at this point, we'll have our scrolling credits thanking each and every one of our patrons. Um, one of them is here right now, so I'll leave him out of the credits. <laughs> um, but uh, I want to also take this opportunity to thank our extremely generous patrons at our Gorgosaurus tier and up by name, because you all get a spoken shout out at the end of every video. And as of recording this video, those patrons include Benjamin Seepser, Nickname 3110, Philip Good Fico, name. Andrew Niddle, Dan O'Kyrus, Florida Man, King Zashu, Max Ironpaw, Noah Riccio, Pythonic, Riley Shero, and Wheat. Wheat. So thank you, all of you. You'll notice that list is getting increasingly long, and that makes us very happy. <laughs> we notice it. And does a lot to make sure that we you know, can keep churning out Skeleton Crew content, which... Um, you know, we love making and we know you guys love watching. So thank uh, you no, all very uh, much. Quick, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. A very quick plug, because I remember seeing in the comments of, of one of your previous videos with students who are a bit younger, who are looking for ways to get summer experience. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this all over the country. Volunteering at your local museum. There are dig programs in various states where you can at least get some kind of experience working in the field which is not everything and all in vertebrate paleontology the way it's sometimes portrayed, but it's good to have. Um, the program I run, it also has programs for high school students at the Sternberg Museum. Um, we've got a growing alumni network um, of students really around the world now. Um, 
when you're looking for stuff to do in the summer, give us a look. It's not necessarily for everybody, the stuff that we do, but it might be worth considering. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. And so with that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to tune in to Virtual SVP if you're registered. We'll be doing a panel there. I'm sure all of you guys want to see a little bit behind the curtain. And of course, mark your calendars for our long, we're not sure how long yet, but long live stream that yeah. we'll be doing to benefit the SVP Futures Fund, which is which exists solely to fund um, summer research opportunities from uh, by people from historically disadvantaged groups to broaden access to vertebrate paleontology. So that live stream will be happening on the 29th, 29th of October. Yep. yep. And all of you should watch and donate what yes. you can to support a really good cause. Absolutely. So, all right. This is the Skeleton Crew, and we are signing off. Signing off. Thanks for watching, everybody. Right. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>